My name is uh, Branko Francois. I'm an associate consultant at uh, AWS, which means that I help our customers implement AWS services. Um, and I specialize in data engineering. Uh, and that's why I also joined uh, the QuickSight uh, focus team. Um, so for today's uh, topic, monitoring AWS resources with scheduled reports in QuickSight, uh, I propose uh, we follow the following agenda. So first I will explain uh, the purpose uh, of why this topic uh, is so interesting or, and so important. And then I'll explain the solution I built, uh, which is called the Cloud Excellence Dashboard. I will guide you through the architecture that is needed uh, to implement this. And then we will go into a demo. And at the end, uh, I'll also share some references so you can build this yourself. So to explain the purpose, of uh, the solution I, I built. I, I also built a scenario for you. It's about a, a fictional company called Space Inc. Um, and I'll immediately introduce you to this uh, company. Uh, so Space Inc uh, actually just suffered a data breach. Uh, the loss is estimated above $5.7 million. Uh, I don't think this is something uh, you would like uh, to see in, uh, in, in any organization you're part of. Uh, and as you can see in the article, the, the reason why they suffered this data breach is because they had no cloud excellence strategy. Uh, and if you look a bit further, you see that they had a publicly accessible RDS instance. And those are uh, things we should definitely prevent. And this is uh, the issue that my uh, solution is trying to solve. So maybe we, we can take a, a deep dive on this scenario and, and see what a few people in Space Inc. have to say about this. So first we can take a look, okay, the CEO of Space Inc. Uh, what are the questions this person might ask at this moment? And probably it will be something in the lines of how can we prevent uh, these breaches into our cloud infrastructure and data in the future? Uh, they wanna solve it now, and of course they don't want it to happen again. Uh, but if we take a look at more technical personas, then they will have a different approach of uh, looking at this issue. For example, the CTO uh, might ask, how can we be sure our cloud infrastructure follows the best practices and compliance rules also to prevent similar events uh, happening again? What are the potential risks for Space Inc? And more importantly, how can we mitigate those risks? And then maybe uh, one application team, uh, and we'll learn more about their applications later, uh, their coordinator, for example, the Nova team, which is a uh, an application that Space Inc monitors could ask, is my team responsible for this data breach? It has it to do with my application? Are we meeting the security and compliance standards with my specific team? And are there any areas of concern that need immediate attention? And then if we go one level lower, we can take a look at a developer in the team of Nova. Uh, and maybe he wants to know, okay, which RDS instance is publicly accessible? What AWS resources are non-compliant and what steps do I need to take to resolve these issues? Uh, so we see the, the questions that a developer uh, and versus, for example, the CEO ask are totally different, although they are all facing the same issue. And the Cloud Excellence Dashboard is a solution that can give answers to these different questions, each on their respective level. So why the Cloud Excellence Dashboard? First of all, it's a way to ingest cloud-related data, such as compliance data, into one data lake to have a central repository for all this data and make the data uniform to use. Then most important, most importantly, because we're here to talk about QuickSize, we're also going to visualize this data and derive the insights that explain potential risks uh, that, for example, Cloud uh, Space Inc. might be facing in the cloud. And then lastly, we also want to alert and prevent. We want to distribute uh, clear tasks so that uh, the developers can mitigate these risks and make sure that they remain well architected in the cloud. So. I think uh, these are some nice uh, things to say, but we need to know, okay, how can we accomplish this? What is needed? And for that, we should take a look at the architecture. So the main building block for this um, dashboard I will show you today, the main data comes from AWS Config, which is a service that allows you to create uh, rules to check compliance. Uh, and we will start with AWS config and it is configured in every AWS account uh, that Space Inc has in their um, 
whole cloud infrastructure, as you can see. So every service team has AWS config. And in AWS config, we have the option to uh, write uh, a lot of data to S3. So that's the next step. We will gather all the data, uh, all the exp exported data from config in one central account. In this case, the analytics account of Space Inc. And then we will also have a Lambda function that partitions this um, data so that we can query it efficiently. And aside from the config data, we also have some account information in S3 because there's a lot of accounts and they all have their metadata, for example, the name of the account, which application the account belongs to, and which environment uh, the account belongs. And we will also have a, a better explanation of the environment of Spacing later. And then in the next step, we are going to write this information to a Glue data catalog, which is uh, one central place where we can describe all the metadata uh, that is uh, accomplished, uh, that is needed to uh, then later query uh, this data. So as you can see, we have Amazon Athena, which is the service that we'll use to query this data and create uh, aggregate views of this config data joined with the account information also coming from S3. And then the next step, once we build uh, some nice uh, queries, we also want to visualize them. Uh, and for that, we will use Amazon QuickSight. And this is also the part that I will demo today. And then we have the paginated reports and a few um, different uh, yeah, sheets. So for example, the config summary and some other sheets I will show. But most importantly, we have the paginated report, which is uh, more like a PDF document with visualizations that we will send out to, for example, developers or application coordinators uh, in Space Inc. So to make that clear, we could use, for example, a Lambda function, which can trigger uh, the QuickSight API uh, to generate a report, which is uh, dedicated to one service. For example, I want the report about the Nova application, and then we can store it again in an S3 bucket and send out this report using another Lambda function to the service coordinator of an application or maybe one of their developers. And then I suggest we immediately move on to the demo. So as I said, first some explanation about the structure that Space Inc uses. So we have the organization Space Inc and they have four applications that they are maintaining. We have Star, Nova, Sun and Moon. So each application has multiple AWS accounts with multiple AWS resources. And each application uh, organizes these in different environments. Uh, we have three environments in this case. We have a lab environment, then a stage environment and production. Production being the last stage where the actual live application is running. And in every of these uh, environments, we can have multiple accounts uh, with different building blocks they need for their application to run. And Star has this, Nova has the same setup, Sun and Moon as well. All right, so that's it uh, for the introduction. And then I would like to move to a demo. Okay, we should be seeing the QuickSight uh, console now. Uh, please let me know if it's not the case. And now uh, we're at the view where we see the different dashboards in my account. And as you can see, we have the Cloud Excellence dashboard here. So let's open this and take a look what's inside. And I suggest we go from left to right. So first you can see we have the compliance summary here. Uh, this is a view, uh, one sheet that summarizes all the compliance data uh, we have in AWS config. And then we also have a few other sheets, as you can see on top about resources, about EC2 and RDS instances, about VPCs and IAM resources, and then lastly also the report. So for the first part of the demo, uh, I will just guide you through the dashboard, the views we have, and then uh, I will live build the report uh, that we can send out and show you how to accomplish this, and then uh, also generate it using the QuickSight uh, API. All right. So for the first few, uh, we can start by seeing uh, this donut chart, where we can see uh, in total for the whole uh, Space Inc, 19% of the resources uh, are non-compliant, and not the resources of the config rules, evaluate to non-compliant, and 81% are compliant. 
So they are doing a good job, but not an excellent job uh, because as we know, they have uh, this data breach. And then uh, to the right of this, we see the compliance by config rule. So here we can get an understanding of uh, for every config rule, how well are we performing? So we see for the first rule, EC2 backups, uh, three times this rule evaluates to non-compliance, 12 times it does to compliant in total, it's evaluated 15 times. And then maybe on the fifth row, we see S3 buckets uh, that are public. If we want to know which uh, config rule is causing the most trouble, then maybe we can look at the visualization below, which is uh, this bar chart. And here we can see EC2, last backup recovery point created, has a count of 25. Um, so this one is evaluated the most, but we see here amount of all resources by config rule. So this doesn't say a lot. Uh, and for this, we should take a look at the top where we have a few controls. And here we can select uh, the, to see data about one specific service. So we have the services, Moon, Nova, Star, Sun, one environment, for example, production. Uh, we can filter on the config rules, but what I want to do now is uh, filter on the compliance. So let's select non-compliant because that's what we're interested in. And now we can see amount of non-compliant resources for every config rule. And now we have a totally different view. So the config rule I am users no policies check uh, is the one that is currently the most non-compliant. And I think this is a very interesting view because now we know, okay, maybe we need to train uh, the developers in our teams more on uh, IAM policies and how to use them. That might be a knowledge gap, um, which is something we should work on to mitigate risk in the future. Then if we want to have a view of compliance by service and environment, we take a, a look to the left where we can see first for the moon application in lab, they have uh, eight non-compliant uh, rules and 17 compliant, uh, eight in total and 17 in total for the whole application, then in lab two and six and production two and six as well. So oof, they have two non-compliances in production. That's something uh, they should investigate as soon as possible. Then for example, the Nova application, they are doing a lot better because in production, they have zero non-compliant issues in this case. And then below, I think uh, one of the most important parts of this uh, first view, we see the details of non-compliant resources. And here we have a table that summarizes for every account ID, uh, for every rule that is evaluated, the account ID in which to which application it belongs, in which environment uh, this is, if it's uh, compliant or non-compliant. So now they're not all non-compliant, of course, because we filtered on non-compliant. Um, and maybe here we can uh, learn more about the first team, which is Moon. So we can select Moon. And now we have an overview of all the uh, non-compliant resources of Moon. And here we see this uh, EC2 instance. So we see the resource type and the ID uh, does not have a backup. It's situated in the EU central one region. So here we actually have uh, a clear action because we know, okay, this is the resource ID we need to investigate and we can look up what this rule, what this config rule means and how we can mitigate the risk. And then lastly, we also have a view that um, shows for every resource type um, how many non-compliant resources there are. So this is also a good indicator of oof, maybe we need more training on this resource type. For the case of Moon, uh, we now see that EC2 instances is maybe a topic they need to learn more about. And that's the first and also the most important view, I would say. And then we have uh, some auxiliary sheets, for example, resources. And as you can see, um, the filter still says Moon. So maybe we can uh, still keep uh, all again. Um, and now we have an overview of all the resources that Space Inc has by account. So maybe we can see, okay, this orange account here has the most um, resources in their account, 14. Um, and we have the same view as a bar chart here. Uh, so we can see the same account number starting with 33 uh, has the most resources. And below we actually have an overview of all the resources and all the accounts with their name, resource type, and ID, in which region, and also possibly if they have an availability zone, which availability zone 
and again the service name the environment and the account id and maybe if we uh, think back uh, to the architecture diagram this account id and service name and environment these are good examples of the data that we use to enrich this information because before the config doesn't know about these service names and environments this is something where we enrich the data but i think this is a very simple view Maybe more interesting is the EC2 summary, where we see all the EC2 instances that are currently live uh, used by Space Inc. Maybe we can take a look at one application, for example, Nova. They have a lot of uh, EC2 instances. Um, and we can see what the name is of the instance and which account they are again, service name and the environment, when the last snapshot was taken so that we have an idea, okay, when was this data created? in which state they were at the at the time, which instance type they are using, which might be interested to see uh, which kind of types are we using, which has a, a very important cost implication. And maybe on the more the security side, again, we see if they have a public IP, maybe this is something uh, we don't want. Uh, we don't want any EC2 instances with public IPs, then here we can learn about them. And also the AMI ID, so the, the IDs of the um, Amazon machine images they are using. Next, we can go to the RDS summary. So here we have first a few uh, visualizations. Um, maybe we can select all again. So for the whole organization, as we already knew, there is one uh, publicly accessible database, which we can see in the first um, visualization. And yeah, although it was only one, it did incur them a great loss. So this is definitely something you want to be able to uh, detect uh, as soon as possible. Then we can also learn about, okay, which database engines are we using? So five times we are using MySQL and then 16 times it's Oracle. And also the RDS uh, database status. So here we see, okay, if you are backing up, the others are all available. And then we can also learn about our, our RDS uh, instances protected for deletion. And here we see six of them are not protected for deletion. So this might also be a red flag. Same for auto minor version upgrades. Are we automatically upgrading the database to a better uh, version? Um, in nine cases, we are not doing this. And lastly, also very important, is the database encrypted? If it's not, definitely a red flag, I would say. And here we see the count is one. So one database is not encrypted. And then below, again, we have the familiar table with all the details. So here we can see again the engines, also the engine versions, um, a more detailed version, which instance type they are using. And if we scroll to the right, you can see, do they have a backup retention? Are they protected for deletion? And uh, we will play around with this uh, summary a bit more later when we build the report. Then next, we have uh, the VPC summary. So maybe we want to look, okay, about uh, the VPCs in STAR and maybe in their production environment. Let's have a look. They only have one VPC in their production environment, uh, which makes sense. And they have uh, per account also one, uh, yeah, for the same account, one VPC. And if you want to learn about the information of this VPC, we can see the resource ID. If it is the default VPC, uh, does it has any tags and which CIDR blocks belong to this VPC? So maybe if we want to see all the VPCs they have, we can filter back. And here we see there is a two stage and one production. Now, of course, it's a bit fake uh, data, so it doesn't always make uh, sense. And then lastly, we have the IAM summary. So here we have an overview of all the uh, identity and access management uh, resources that are used at Space Inc. So here we can see there's 70 in total, 51 of them are roles and there are 19 policies. So they currently have no uh, IAM users. And here we can see how many roles there are in every account. So for example, this account has a lot of roles, maybe something to look into. And then again, a summary uh, for every account, all the uh, policies with their names and also all the roles with their names. So that's it for the introduction to the dashboard. And next, what I want to do uh, with you is build a report. So for that, I'm going to go to the analysis view. So here we are back again in the 
uh, QuickSight homepage and we see analysis and I will open the dashboard here. So we have the same view here, the compliance summary, but we also have a report. And this uh, report, it's actually the end result. Uh, so I have already built this uh, before and I will show you the steps to create it. As you can see, we have a header, which is the title. And then we have a few visualizations that you should recognize uh, from before. Uh, and also again, the RDS instances, but now with a few additions. Uh, and most importantly, what we are going to add here, and you can already see it, we have like this word all again showing up and it's marked here with a, a small box. This means that I added some parameters and the idea is we want to create a report dedicated to a certain team. This is a good overview for, for example, the CTO uh, in our case, who wants to get one big overview of the whole organization, but the application manager of Nova doesn't care about what is happening in the Sun application maybe. So if we could filter it and send out this report to their service coordinator, they know what to do. So we're going to create a new sheet. I mostly do this with this plus icon here next to the report sheet and we select paginated report. Here I use the A3 format and I select a landscape. So let's add a new sheet. Maybe we can change the name. Uh, so let's double click on sheet nine and we can call it compliance report. And as you can see, we automatically get a header, uh, then section one where we can add some visualizations and a footer. So maybe we can start with the header uh, and let's add some text. So if you want to add text on the top bar, here we have add, add a visual or add text. So let's select text and we are going to call it compliance summary or, and then later we will add the parameter uh, that will give us the actual uh, application. And let's make it a bit bigger and then we can make the header smaller and also longer so that it spans our uh, whole screen. And maybe one tip uh, I can give, now it's set to actual size. Maybe we can set it to fit to it. Then we can see the whole view, how it will look like uh, in the end. So we have the compliance summary uh, title. And then in the footer, maybe we can add uh, who to contact if they have any questions. So we add another text block. And, uh, we can add questions, mail to uh, compliance, at spaceink.com and then we make it also a bit smaller and if we want to make it very pretty we can select text and change it to align to the center so i think this uh, looks nice they know who to mail if there's any questions and now we are going to add a few visualizations so for the first visualization, um, we're going to add the donut chart from the compliance summary. And this one, we are not going to build from scratch. What we can do is go to the visualization, select the menu options. So the three dots in the ellipsis, and then go to duplicate visual two and select compliance report. And as you can see, it pops up here um, and we can change maybe the title to overview of amount of compliant and non-compliant rules for, and then later we will have the service name here. So let's call it X for now. And we can remove this autograph and let's add a second visualization the same way maybe the compliance by service, which will also be filtered later. So then we have an overview for one service, how good they are performing in terms of compliance. So the same way, duplicate visual to compliance report. Maybe we can move this one to the left here. And we should change the title because it's a compliance, not by service and environment, but compliance by environment as it will be filtered later. 
and maybe also make it a little bit bigger so it shows non-compliant that's nice okay and then we can also add the table so we can select add visual on the left here and select the table and maybe move it underneath and this one will be big so we can make it span the whole space and we are going to select from the left uh, from the correct uh, view so in this case this is the uh, v config so the view config rules resources compliance and we select the account id then the service name the environment the config rule name the resource id type and region and i think that will be enough we're also going to change the title let's call it details of non-compliant resources for all uh, not for all for the service which we'll add later but uh, now we are still selecting the compliant ones as well so maybe if i add you see okay we have compliant types still uh, that's not what we want so we are going to add a filter uh, you can do this by using the filter icon here we select the visual and we can add the filter compliance type and if we click on it we can instead of select all only select the non-compliant ones and then press apply and now we only have non-compliant so maybe we can remove this field again. So if we go back to the visualize field using the bar icon here, we can remove compliance type again. So now we know these are only non-compliant resources. And then lastly, we're going to add the RDS instances that might be at risk. So we're going to create another visual, add a visual and this time and before we add the visual, so I'll delete this one again, we have to change the data set to RDS. So we have a different view. We add the visual, another table, we can make it big again. And for this one, we will select the account ID, the service name, then the environment again. Maybe we also want to know the instance type, the region in which it is. The status and then the backup retention no not the backup window the backup retention yes and the backup retention we can just move it over here as well because we don't want it to be summed it can just display the number and then also the deletion protection so these are the values we're going to talk about deletion protection um, the publicly accessible, which is what we are trying to figure out. Storage encrypted. Are we encrypting it? And lastly, the auto miner version upgrades. Voila, that's, uh, that's it in terms of the values we need. But now we also need to filter these to only display the ones that might be at risk. So let's change the title to RDS instances at risk and press save and we're going to add another filter with the filter button and add and this time we are going to add a filter that has uh, multiple clauses so first we can choose the deletion protection so we can type it in deletion protection open it up and we select only the ones uh, that are false so we remove the true we only want those that are not protected. And as you can see, we have way less values now, but we are also interested in the ones that are publicly accessible. So we type in publicly accessible and add a filter condition. As you see, I added a filter condition and this is an OR clause. And here we want those that are true. So let's select true. And normally we should see now that there is one that is true probably at the end indeed so there is one true and now we also know who the culprit is it's indeed in sun lab environment 
uh, where they had one publicly accessible uh, database. And so as you can see, the filter, it's a group. And if we open it again, we can add more clauses, uh, like for the storage encryption, encryption. And of course, we want them to be encrypted. So those that are false should be marked. And lastly, we add the auto minor version upgrades, and we want those that are not automatically doing this. And then we press apply. And if we look to the right now, we can see the visual properties, where I also add edit the title. We can apply a conditional formatting, which means that we will mark those that we are interested in. So for example, for the deletion protection, I will select this one. We can add a background color, we can choose a red color. And if they are false, we want them to be red. So we say equals false, then they should be red. And if we apply now, then we see the deletion protection the ones that are false are set uh, to red. So we apply. And maybe for the publicly accessible ones, we want to do it again, add a background color, and maybe we choose for an even darker red because this is the, the big red flag we were looking after. And we also have to set it to true, of course, apply. And here we find immediately the one that is uh, true. So uh, I won't do it for the other values. I think it's clear. So now we have everything we need except for the filter with the parameter that we want. So what are we going to do? We are going to use the DJ icon. Uh, that's how I call it. So we have the parameters here with the DJ sliders. Uh, but we're not going to make music. We're going to create a parameter similar to the one I already created, service name. So we can call it service name two for this. And I press create. And it already suggests, do you want to connect this to, for example, a filter? And indeed, I want to connect this to a filter. So it brings me to the filter view again, and it shows the grouped filter here, which is set to only this visual. So I will add a filter on the service name. And this time I'm going to open it again and I will change the filter type to a custom filter and select use parameter. And here I'm going to select no. So we're, uh, we select a parameter and we choose service name two. And now it will uh, filter only if a parameter is given. So in our case, that will be when we uh, use the API. And I'm going to apply it to all the visuals of the sheet. So here I will, instead of choose a single visual, I will select this sheet and then we apply. And now lastly, I want to add this parameter uh, to a few of the text fields. So for example, the header, I can use this slider icon again, you recognize parameter and we add service name too. And now we see this compliance summary for all because the filter is not applied. And we can do this maybe for this table again, edit the title. And as you can see the parameters here, they are automatically added. So you can click on it. And then when we will actually use the API, uh, which we will do now, it will be filtered. So we are going to do it for this report I have already built maybe a last step that is important. You have to publish uh, to a dashboard to use this uh, paginated report filter. So we are going to replace an existing dashboard. Um, we want to include all the sheets, publish the dashboard. And now we are going back to the dashboard view. And as you can see, my report uh, is added here. And it's still uh, filtered on all, uh, but that won't be the case later. And if you don't want to use the API, you can always uh, create a schedule to uh, send this out. So we can open schedules through the clock icon here. And here, as you can see, I already created a weekly report. So what this does is on the level of all applications, so not on the filtered uh, version, uh, we send one PDF that will look exactly like this to one recipient every uh, Wednesday and Monday at 6.29 p.m.
So you can add a schedule, give it some name, uh, describe the content. So we want the PDF, change when, what the cadence can be. So it can be daily. And then the emails uh, it should send to. So that's what I already did. But we are going to use the API. And there's two reasons why we are going to use the API for this. Uh, the first reason is because I want it to be filtered. And the second reason is we can only use the filter, uh, the feature I just showed with scheduling to QuickSight users. So users that have an account in QuickSight, either a reader or an author. And that's not something we always want. Maybe we just want to email them uh, these reports, uh, even if they don't have an account. Uh, so we can create these reports as PDF and maybe build a Lambda function that can do this for us. So let's go to the console. This is the AWS console. And in the search bulk, we type in Lambda. And I have already created a Lambda function that will generate the report for us. So we can open it here. And then we select the Lambda function code and we can have a look. So this is a Python code. I use the QuickSight NS3 client, as you can see here. And this is the most important function. So we have create snapshot. We have the account ID. Uh, so we specify the account ID that uh, dashboards live in. Then the sheet selection. So here we select this sheet and we want all the visuals. Um, we have a bucket configuration. So to which bucket are we going to write it? Uh, this one is the reports of Space Inc. We have a prefix. So all the files will have a prefix that is similar to their service name. And then most importantly, we specify a string parameter, which is also set to service name. So this means that we will filter based on the service team uh, that we are going to send it to. And here I have a list with star, moon, sun, nova, so the service names, and we will execute this for every service name in this list. And I also create a snapshot ID here using a timestamp. This is to make it unique because we need to give a unique snapshot ID to the API. And I also specify the dashboard ID, which is of course needed to get uh, the correct uh, report. And then here uh, I actually triggered the create snapshot function, which triggers this API call. So as you can see, it's quicksight.start dashboard snapshot job. And I will also uh, show you a blog post that will uh, give you more information about this. If you want to know where to get this sheet ID, maybe we can go back here. If you go to the URL, then you can see here the sheet ID. This is the last one. And I think this one is the dashboard ID before the slash sheets. So this might be a, something more difficult to find. So let's uh, run a test. And as you can see, success, all the snapshot jobs have started. So let's go to S3 because luckily I already ran this a bit earlier and we go to the reports space ink bucket. And here we can maybe go to Nova and we'll get the last report. So this is one I created a couple of minutes ago. We can download the file. And as you can see, now we have a compliance summary for Nova, which is filtered. We see still in production, they don't have any issues. Uh, the non-compliant resources for Nova are shown here, uh, the overview. So they are 92% compliant and they have three RDS instances at risk, three that are not deletion protected and one that is uh, not automatically doing version upgrades. So that's it for the demo. Uh, then we should get back to the slides. So I think you should be seeing the slides now. If not, uh, please interrupt me. So we have the diagram again. Next, I want to show you some blog posts. The first blog post is the following. This is a blog post that will explain how to visualize AWS config data. This basically explains, if we look back at the final architecture, everything we have up until the service teams, AWS accounts with config, config until the QuickSight dashboard with all the sheets. The paginated report is not included there. Uh, that's why we had this uh, session, of course, to guide you how to make it. 
And then the second one is a blog post that uh, explains how to use the snapshot expert API.